This is data visualization in R. We're at part 11 right now. And this is Ryan Womack, data librarian at Rutgers University Libraries. We are going to focus in this section on interactive data on the web and look at a few packages, techniques that are used to work and easily generate web interactive data using R. So as we mentioned in the previous sections, interactivity is becoming more of the norm in data visualization. Uh, it's becoming easier, more intuitive, and more powerful uh, thanks to a lot of different innovations. And so I think the packages that we're going to look at in R illustrate that. They're not the only method. Um, these are all things that can also be done in uh, with JavaScript libraries, with Python programming, with Tableau, with other software, um, but we're in the R environment, so we're focused on that. So I'm going to start out by talking about R charts. R charts is a package, there's a link to the website describing it, um, that using uh, some JavaScript techniques behind the scenes uh, lets you generate basic interactivity uh, using R syntax that differs very little from standard lattice commands. So if I just, we're at section 7.8 in the code, and I look at R charts, load R charts, just run, uh, the command here is R plot, and you can see that it's a pretty standard plot broken down by species. Um, nice little plot, and the difference is when we mouse over, we get information about each of the points. So it is um, added that functionality for us, and the nice thing about this is that it has um, the, the same formats can be exported to uh, a, an HTML friendly version. Uh, you've got some things that you can publish to pre-existing websites like RPubs that will sort of automatically host your your information. Um, it puts it in a format that is very sort of portable in that way. Um, here's a second one, second example of R plot. Same thing with the bar plot. We've got mouse over functionality. Um, a little bit more mouse over functionality with the M plot command that will do a time series but uh, allow us to inspect each point along the way. And I think overall the strength of R charts is it's it's very simple. You really have very little adaptation uh, to do from a standard R environment to add this nice extra functionality to your, your graphics. And we can also embed these R charts in documents if we use the Slideify package. So that's one approach. Uh, a second approach, taking it up a little bit of complexity and a little bit more power, is the Shiny package. So Shiny is developed by RStudio, and so there are definitely some resources behind this. Um, you can go to the website and you can get some ideas. You can get downloads of versions of the, um, the Shiny server. Like RStudio, there is a professional and a free version, so you can use those. And what Shiny does um, is provide a web hosting or web server environment that lets you quickly build interactive graphical applications. So there's a lot of this that is familiar R syntax. Uh, this, there's a little bit that's different, um, which is that, let's, and let's look at examples for this. So we're in section 7.9. And I'm just going to load the uh, built-in examples. Uh, there, are, there are several examples built into Shiny. You can just use the run example function to pull them up and play with them yourself. Um, the first one is a histogram. And so the, the Shiny app up here plots a histogram of some data. And the interactivity allows us to adjust the number of bins in, in the histogram 
uh, from 0 or sorry 1 to 50 we need at least one bin in the histogram clearly um, so we can vary that level of detail and you can see it's very responsive we slide it reacts slide it reacts and down below because this is an example we are showing the code that's necessary to generate this so it's basically two parts there's a server file that sits on whatever you're using as your shiny server that could be a separate machine serving up shiny apps over the web it could be you're just local you're, you know you're on your laptop you're serving it up to yourself um, either way but the server file is more like a traditional R function where it, we're just telling telling shiny what to display so we're, we're telling it what to plot how to plot it uh, with the histogram type type function and then there's a second piece that is the UI file or the user interface and in this file we define how the user interacts or experiences that plot so here we're specifying that there's a sidebar that it's got a slider and how we lay out that page and it's a very simple straightforward kind of of syntax so this is really all you need to to do this and you've put the control of your data into the user's hands by giving them that interactivity so it's quite nice and you can see the link here that says open in browser the nice thing about shiny is that all of this um, can work within R or in a browser environment so you're generating uh, code that you can then just put onto your web server and have it have it run let's look at a couple of other examples let's look at the reactive expression and I have to hit stop here first before I can run a new new one that's one difference with shiny um, here I can actually explore several data sets and choose to display a different number of observations um, I can actually even edit the the display a bit so we can give the user that option um, let's look at another one let's look at the shiny app built from HTML example number eight this is uh, actually performing a random sample uh, here's 500 observations from a normal distribution and we plot them and each time we run this it's going to generate a different random sample so it's good the histogram will look slightly differently we can see how it behaves when we have fewer observations or more observations as we get more observations we're getting closer to uh, an actual idealized normal curve and uh, we can also modify that and run it for different distributions and see what happens um, you can see it's it's very responsive very fast and we're actually doing some kind of data work uh, live in this interface once again we could pull it up in a browser as well so definitely worth learning if this approach interests you uh, that's that's shiny uh, I will go to the shiny gallery link that's on the slide to show you that beyond those basic examples people have done a lot of work um, to make you know inter inter interactive mapping exploration of data um, this is one that's kind of interesting the movie Explorer these do require you to run flash so you're gonna have to enable that on your system um, to do it and so this is a database of movie reviews in Rotten Tomatoes on the Rotten Tomatoes website there's 2500 plus movies but we can work with or actually there are 2500 plus movies that meet the default criteria uh, but we can adjust these right so if we say movies with at least 10 reviews that's 4,000 some um, movies so we might want to look at 
movies that have at least 200 reviews, so pretty popular movies, and that are more recent, say since 1990. If I can grab that. 1990. And once I select that, it's going to update. And so I have, actually it looks like it didn't change the number of movies very much because probably very few of the pre-1990 movies have been reviewed many times. And I can look at, say, a genre of movie. So let's look at, uh, let's say, comedy. Right. So now I'm down to 60 movies. I've made a selection. Um, I can look at these and the mouse over and get information about the ones with high ratings, the ones with low ratings, um, and put this, again, take a large data set, put it in the hands of users to do what they want with it and to, to filter and slice it however they like. We can actually also plot different things. We can plot the box office returns of the movies uh, versus other characteristics. Are the the good movies <laughs> with high ratings getting a lot of box office or not? We can explore all that through something like this. So the uh, once again, the gallery has lots of ideas. Uh, for most of these, it's going to show you the the code that was used to generate it. Um, I didn't look here to see if we've got that. We don't have the code. Here it is, get code for the movie explorer. So we can um, actually pull that code from a GitHub site where it's not displaying sort of side by side with the um, but you know the, the the norms of the community include sharing a lot of this information and so you can use these to get great ideas and, and build off other people's work. Um, so there's there's a lot that can be done here. And again, quite complicated things are possible if you invest some time in designing your application. This is a, a retirement calculator, right, that will simulate your returns to retirement, for example. Just as an example of there's a lot that you can do with Shiny. So let's leave that. Uh, just as a final note, R charts, if you're using R charts functions, those will work in Shiny as well. Uh, and then we're going to do a final example uh, that is the package ggviz. This is a pretty new package, um, also coming out of R Studio. And you see that gg, and you see gg, and you think grammar of graphics and ggplot, uh, as we've been emphasizing uh, in these sessions. And that's exactly what we're what this is. It takes a ggplot type of approach to the syntax and makes it interactive in the spirit of Shiny. Uh, and it can work with Shiny server type infrastructure and take your ggplot graphics and put them in a browser viewable web version. So um, there's a web page that describes all that. The syntax of this uh, has been changing um, relatively rapidly. So again, this is the type of thing that if my examples don't work when you come back to this in a few months, uh, go back to the original website, look again, and see what, what they might have done. Because I have experienced some changes in syntax even in these examples over time. Um, but that's that's the way it is. Uh, that's part of uh, working in the R environment and part of the the benefits of the R environment are that it, it reacts quickly to new developments, but you do have to adjust that a bit. So the, our first example, uh, this is a little bit of a different syntax. If you notice these sort of um, operators that pass information from one step to the next uh, is used here, that's a slight difference from regular syntax. So we, we specify the data set. This is our cars data set that we've worked with in other sessions. We pass it to ggviz and we plot the weight of the car versus the miles per gallon weight on the x-axis, miles per gallon on the y-axis, and then we pass a couple of other options to generate interactivity. So here 
we can adjust the, the there's a smoothing line that estimates a smooth curve between these points and we can set it to smooth over a wide span or we can set it to smooth over a very narrow span which will make the curve uh, in a sense more precise but less generalizable like if you think of it that way but you can see that I can run the slider in different positions see how it goes and it reacts very quickly it's kind of entertaining to see the animated line move and we can also adjust the size of the points if we want to display something a bit differently so this is just showing you that that interactivity works uh, we could export this to a web viewable version as well I'm not going to do that in this example. I'm going to show you the second example, which is slightly more complicated. These are just the standard examples taken from the website. And here we are running a density function against the data. But we mentioned this a little bit, hinted at it earlier, that there are different methods of computing the density. And this uh, interactivity allows us to choose those methods. We can do a standard Gaussian method. We can do a Ipanechnikov method. We can do a triangular method. And these are all slight methodological differences of how you're computing that density, which might make a difference. You might have a preference. You can check whether they make a significant difference very quickly here by just switching to a different uh, kernel estimator and we can also adjust the span that we are smoothing over so that's the bandwidth adjustment a bigger bandwidth adjustment will generate a smoother curve but uh, a closer fit to the data will be had if we have a smaller bandwidth adjustment but then it becomes a sort of less generalizable function but again you notice uh, the reaction is quite quick. As we have smaller bandwidths, you can sort of see the uh, computational shapes come out a little more, like rectangular. Does it make as much difference when you smooth it over a larger difference, but distance? But when you have small bandwidth, uh, the method does make a big difference. Okay, so that's ggviz. You're, you're again taking some of your standard functions, making them more interactive, more generalizable, and you can you can put them on a website and it it'll run the same way. That's a big plus. All right, so I'm going to end here, and our final segment we're going to talk a little bit about.